How to upgrade the Z-axis on a Velamin K8200 3D printer. This will cover both the hardware installation and the software configuration. For this you'll need both a trapezoidal spindle and nut of your choice. I use the TR8 by 1.5 spindle, 400 millimeters in length. You can get one of these with the nut on eBay for about $35. Before we get started, you'll need to use your 3D printer to print out a new mount for the hexagonal nut you're using. Using your caliper, measure out the nut you'll be using and draw up a 3D model to mount it with. If you use a TR8 nut, they're usually 17 by 15 millimeters. If you browse around on the internet, you may find a pre-made model already drawn out, which will save you a bit of time. Using your highest resolution settings, go ahead and print out your new mount. I recommend going for a lot of perimeters with less infill. I printed mine at 4 perimeters with 10% infill, which will be more than strong enough for this application. Once your mount is finished printing, ensure it fits nice and tightly into the mount you made. You want little to no wiggle room for this. If it sits in there nice and tightly, you're ready to continue. If not, quickly reprint another one. Before you continue, place something under the Z-axis arm and lower it onto it. That way it'll hold the arm in place while you change out the rod. Unscrew the top of your motor coupler from the old Z-axis rod. If you haven't picked one up yet, I recommend getting a flex coupler off of Amazon for about $5. They're a great improvement over the original one that's given to you. Once you do this, you'll be able to lift the rod out freely. Next, unscrew the old Z-axis nut mount from the frame using an M5 Allen wrench. Remove the two outermost screws. Once you do, the assembly should wiggle about freely on the axis. Lastly, you'll need to remove the top bearing holder. Push up on the rod to pop out the bearing and tilt the rod to the side to create access for an Allen wrench. Unscrew the mount to free the rod from the printer frame. With your old Z-axis removed, begin to install your new one. Insert the nut into your 3D printed mount. Make sure it's closed firmly and install any screws your mount may be using. Attach your new mount to the frame with the nut in place. The thread size on the frame is M5 in case you need to use longer screws. If you do, just make sure they don't go too far in and hit the frame as this will lock up the axis. Once you have that tightened down, look down through your mount from above and make sure it's lined up with the Z-axis motor at the bottom. Now spend a year and a half screwing your trapezoidal spindle through the nut down through the axis. Keep going until it's almost to the bottom. At this point, double check to make sure it's nice and lined up with the coupler. If everything's lined up, lower the spindle down into the coupler and tighten down the set screws. After this, the hardware install is complete and now we're going to work on the software configuration. The only firmware changes that have to be made are the Z-Motor steps per millimeter highlighted here. We have to calculate what our new steps should be. If you search on Google, the website prusaprinters.org has a great calculator for screw-driven systems. The standard development has a 1.8-200 motor step angle and a 1 16th micro stepping. Put the pitch of the spindle you bought into the lead screw pitch box. In this case, we're inserting 1.5 which will give us a total step number of 2133.33. Once you've calculated your steps, insert the new steps number into the Z box in the steps per millimeter section and save it to the EEPROM. After this, your new Z axis is installed and ready to go. However, it's a good idea to make sure that the Z axis is traveling the correct distance. Mark two locations on the chassis 10 millimeters apart. Raise the Z-axis from one to the other and make sure it's traveling the correct distance as instructed. After this upgrade and a good configuration, you'll notice a definite improvement in print quality. I had some serious banding problems with mine which provoked me to do this. You can very easily see the difference just by switching out the rods. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out. If it did, be sure to leave a like, it really helps me out. Thank you guys very much for watching and good luck printing.